uh, together. Uh, Ms. Binks, are there any changes to the agenda? No, 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 no. Are there any declarations of interest? Not our notice. So a motion to approve the agenda. Collins, Pearson on the motion, all those in favor? Carry. Carry. Council Park is on her way for a uh, full, full form. The last time we met was just about two months ago on that, and, uh, and staff were reporting on their actions over the last couple of months. But you have before you the, uh, the minutes of our November the 2nd. Any errors or omissions, if not a motion to, uh, to approve. So, Pearson. On the motion, all those in favor? Carry. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, today is virtually spent on, on presentations, uh, um, kind of updates, and then item 5.1 is we'll, uh, um, we may require some not only interaction but uh, recommendation there. So, Mike, uh, I'll turn it over to you. There's a few new faces on here. Why don't we just go around again and just, uh, and uh, so uh, that start with you and we'll kind of go this way. Beth Pitcher with the City Manager's Office, and uh, my role here is as the lead of the Service Delivery Review Strategy Team and supporting the web redevelopment team. Okay. Uh, Mike Kirkopoulos, uh, Corporate Communications with the City Manager's Office, uh, here um, as a here to provide an update on 4.2 as an input from communications. Ann Lane's Communications Officer with Community Services, and I'm here to support Mike uh, regarding the social media strategy. Everybody needs a support thing. Bill James, <laughs> <laughs> Planning and Economic Development Department, and uh, I'm a service delivery team and a web redevelopment team. <coughs> Jennifer DiDomenico, uh, Corporate Services, Service Delivery Review Project Manager. Jane Lynn, Corporate Services, and I'm also a strategy team, service delivery strategy team member um, leading and helping to assist with the web redevelopment. Jay Adams, I'm a service delivery analyst on Mason. Ken Arts, I'm the retired chief librarian. I'm the retired, but I'm uh, the acting uh, general manager of the corporate services, and uh, this is still a bit of a carryover for me in terms of what this uh, role is going to be to Councillor Collins, Councillor Chad Collins, Councillor Maria Pearson, Councillor Russ Powers, and the uh, the chair of the committee, uh, Karen Bates. <laughs> We're on all their goals and we're on all their pin boards. Uh, no, and, and, it's, and it's got red circles and then and, and, and an increase heading towards the middle. So, Michael, over to you, please. Item 4.1 on, uh, on, on presentations. So, through the chair, uh, as Councillor uh, Powers uh, pointed out, uh, it's been since November that we've had the opportunity of presenting the web development strategy uh, to subcommittee. We wanted to take this opportunity to provide some updates with respect to the web redevelopment project. I'm going to be joined today by uh, Jay Adams and Ken Roberts with respect to Agenda Item 4.1, uh, providing updates in terms of the web redevelopment team, uh, an update with respect to the uh, RFP that went out just before the uh, holiday break uh, that related to the web technology assessment, and uh, Ken will provide uh, some uh, updates and discussion on the uh, on the business case. In terms of uh, the web redevelopment strategy, you would have seen, sorry, Jay, can I just get you to put the slide for you? You would have seen this framework in the past. We presented it in November on the left side. There are a series of four outcomes that the web redevelopment strategy sets out to achieve. And on the right side are a series of actions that the web redevelopment team have undertaken. So uh, in terms of reference to the web redevelopment team, you'll see that bottom uh, red bar on that pyramid makes reference to the government governance of the web. The current governance of the web project uh, consists of the web redevelopment team and Jay will provide some updates with respect to the uh, actions since November of the web redevelopment team as it relates to those various steps in that uh, step pyramid. Uh, so again, uh, we just want to share with you that framework that the web redevelopment team and the strategy uh, still sets up to work. Okay. In terms of uh, the web uh, redevelopment team, the uh, work since November has uh, very much focused 
on uh, continuing the practice of reviewing analytics uh, as it relates to the existing city website. Uh, another objective uh, sets out to uh, deal with the content, uh, streamlining of writing, and so I'll, I'll read specifically from my notes because I don't want to uh, minimize the work of the web redevelopment team. Uh, to that second point, streamlining content to make it easier for citizens to find and understand our information and services uh, under uh, improved findability and, uh, and search, uh, preparing, uh, sorry, under the uh, bullet preparing for AODA, the web team is uh, making efforts to prepare for meeting our compliance requirements for AODA and JETI will speak out to some specific work uh, in terms of a pilot that will be undertaken by the web redevelopment team and based on the uh, outcome of that pilot, uh, the web redevelopment team will then look to expand their process to the uh, full city website. Uh, the uh, web redevelopment team is beginning work to improve the uh, online bus uh, schedule information, which was identified as one of the key online services to, to improve, if you recall, uh, when Ken and I presented the web redevelopment strategy to uh, General Issues Committee, we had discussed uh, possibilities of focusing on a series of uh, transactions or functional areas. The bus schedule was identified by the Service Delivery Review Strategy Team as a opportunity to try to improve the level uh, of service and to provide uh, heightened level of uh, service delivery information to our uh, users. And so there has been some conversations between uh, the web redevelopment team and HSR in an effort to uh, focus some attention uh, to, the, um, to the bus schedule information as a uh, opportunity to, uh, to identify where there may be improvements to service or efficiency opportunities uh, and the expectation is to report back to this web redevelopment team in the future with respect to the outcome of that work. Uh, the team uh, has uh, been focused on a uh, work plan and you can see a series of sub-bullet points relating to the work plan for 2013. Uh, the design, look and feel, uh, will be one of the focus areas of the web team in 2013. Again, if you recall, as part of the presentation to General Issues Committee, uh, under the objective of improving the city's image, uh, we did identify the need, uh, as uh, Council had uh, similarly identified the need, in fact, directed staff to undertake a uh, review of the web page design, the look and feel, and uh, directed staff to identify opportunities to improve on the city's web page. So specific to that direction, uh, the web team is looking at undertaking efforts in the next uh, few months in terms of initiating that work in the hope of delivering uh, an improved design look and feel possibly by the end of 2013 uh, going into 2014. Uh, the design platform uh, hosting and development, again, Jay will provide an update. Uh, an RFP, as I stated previously, was issued in, uh, just prior to the uh, holiday break, and Jay will have some additional uh, information as to the uh, objectives that were identified in that RFP, the timelines of uh, the RFP, and uh, the opportunity for information sessions for the public, and some uh, consultation that was built into that RFP uh, in an effort to garner some um, comments and feedback from the community uh, prior to reporting back to this subcommittee on the outcome of that assessment. Redevelopment, as I mentioned previously, the redevelopment of online services specific to uh, HSR, and we will be able to report back to future dates with respect to that work, uh, and I know that Jay has been working closely with HSR staff on a charter uh, for that work uh, and some common objectives uh, that both HSR and the Redevelopment team will be working towards. Uh, 
and development of additional uh, online services. Uh, this would, again, be dependent upon funding and resources. There were a series of areas that uh, were identified as part of our report to GIC, including taxation, animal licensing, recreation, and business services. The strategy team felt it was important to undertake one and uh, go through the process of focusing on one of these online services, that being the HSR bus scheduling and reporting back to this subcommittee with the update in terms of improved service or, and or efficiencies that were gained. So I'm going to pass it on to Jay uh, at this time, and Jay will be able to provide uh, the subcommittee with an update with respect to the web technologies. Okay, so we'll just take a pause. Any, any questions, Maria or uh, Chad, at this point? That the uh, animal licensing, that one's already provided online. It has the service charge to it. Um, it. It's on this list because we would make alterations to how we, we offer that online, or it's, it's just there to advise us that it's it's already there. And, yeah. So the, the five uh, online services that we had identified as potentially opportunities for review, we looked at several uh, elements of it, how the user experience is currently working for citizens, what the uptake of that service is online currently, so how many people are doing it online versus offline channels, um, opportunities for revenue. So we looked at a few benchmarks that we uh, used to identify these five services and basically think that there's a good opportunity in reviewing those services to improve the experience of citizens and bring up the use of that service online. And we get to see through you, Mr. Chairman, the, the raw data with that, Jay, in terms of the uh, how many people are using it, how many licenses, you know, using the dog licenses as an example. You know, there's that extra fee there now, $1.80 or whatever it is. I just renewed mine and I, I, uh, I mailed mine in because it was cheaper than doing it online. So uh, I just, it seems like putting barriers up for some of these. And, and I'm hoping that at some point in time, we'll see a list of, uh, a shopping list of other services as well. And I know that other municipalities offer other services online. Have we made those comparisons yet? Or are we strictly looking at the ones internally that we, we know there's needed opportunities? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have looked at other municipalities as part of that assessment. And uh, do know that the other services that are available in those communities. So we do have an eye towards increasing the services that we offer online. But recognizing that for these services that we already provide online with experience may not be very good or may, there may not be a lot of traction to take up on those. But we want to focus on those really big services first before we look at adding more services in. But certainly through this project, we have to look at every service on our website and redevelop it to some level because it's going from one technology to a new technology. But these are the ones where we will look at doing a deeper analysis to make sure they're really working well for citizens and applying that methodology through all the services, new and the ones that are also converting through. Thank you for that. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I don't think I caught the timelines, Jay, in terms of the uh, when we expect to see these four or five back, and then when we, when will we expect to see other services that may, where there may be opportunities to put them on. So I'll jump in and then Jay can expand as part of um, the report that went forward in June to GIC. Again, we did identify all five areas. Uh, we were uh, committee approved a set limit in terms of a budget for the immediate term with an expectation that staff will report back for the business and general business case for web redevelopment. In terms of the existing budget, uh, it's sufficient to support the bus scheduling uh, application. I would suggest the other four areas in terms of the bottom line services, uh, that would be brought forward in terms of that overall business case in terms of financial resources to support continuing on and uh, undertaking reviews in terms of those online services and setting some objectives and identifying where there may be impediments both financial or other in terms of achieving those objectives. So I'm not sure that they are within the work plan for 2013 and 14. And again, it would be subject to the overall funding level that's approved by subcommittee as relates to the full how can we find out how much it costs to pursue others or to fast track some of those that are already on the list? So I, through the chair, I believe when we presented our uh, June report, we had earmarked an estimated 75,000 per uh, online service review. 
and uh, again within the uh, existing approved budget uh, by the council, uh, again the HSR was one of the areas we felt uh, in terms of timing was appropriate. We had buy-in from uh, HSR staff in terms of the bus scheduling, uh, again as part of our report back with respect to the overall business case, uh, we can speak to the ability to accelerate and move up those projects that are undertake those projects within the, the overall funding available to the business case. And, and for timing, I, I mean, in the business case, we're hoping, I think, at the present time, that that would be made to be presented to our council, and the transaction fee uh, would be a component of that to review that transaction fee and say, where, where should that reside? Should there be a transaction fee or should there not? How would you make up that? And that's 75 per service? Uh, that's through the chair, that's the 75 to look at the animal licensing, even though it's already on there? Or did I, yeah. did I miss this? Yeah. So through the chair, uh, when we developed that report in June, we had estimated based on the mix of online services, on average, it would be approximately. 75 that, that would be dependent upon the scope of the work and the objectives we were setting up to achieve. But uh, we can bring that back as part of the business case uh, report and uh, try to make some efforts in terms of identifying specific objectives as it relates to animal licensing. And uh, we can uh, engage uh, subcommittee members prior to that report back in terms of scoping out that work and then trying to the best of our ability to cost out that. And I think for you, Mr. Chair, too, that when we have that consultant in place and you're talking about the technology platform, mm -hmm. it may be that you're going to have a less expensive technology platform, but more expensive than being at back, uh, the back end services, or a more expensive front end platform, and not very much expensive, because maybe there's already uh, APIs that are out there in other municipalities that provide that type of functionality. That's one of those questions that we really, because it as in, we don't deal with those very often, so we need that outside expertise from the person who deals with those on a regular basis to sort of tell us what's the best model. The 75,000, I think, was a, a ballpark, and we said that during the GIC committee. It was a ballpark estimate based upon what other municipalities were spending on it. But it's going to kind of be a mix of the software itself and the back end time and systems. So it, 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 some of it may be spent in one place or the other. So, through you, Mr. Chair, that what we hope to deliver by the business case is more definitive yes. estimates on what those remaining would cost mm -hmm. uh, based on the scope of this might identify how big we want to make that improve our experience and really focus on pushing quickly to migration to that channel or more incremental changes here over here. So, it'll be based on the targets and measures for the council plans and management plans. Through the chair, I apologize for responding to the response. But Ken did touch upon it. I don't want to minimize the potential impact uh, of the back end technology. So, as we identified these uh, potential online services, as we needed to engage and we need to engage uh, the service delivery uh, departments in terms of the back end technology and whether or not there are some required investments in terms of that technology to achieve the overall objectives uh, that may be identified. So, again, that was a large, significant unknown at the time that we presented our uh, June report, so that would uh, require some further discussions and efforts as part of the development of the business case and the scoping for our own services. And, and those, Mr. Chairman, those costs then could be reduced if, in fact, we see another municipality that has a system that works and we can just copy theirs. Because most of these are the basics that are already offered for most municipalities. I, so I, I just I'm surprised it costs that much, knowing that we can't just look at what someone else is using and implement that here, knowing there may be some, some back-end changes within the department that need to occur. That's, that, that I think, is obvious. But in terms of the systems themselves and getting them up and running. It may be, however, and that might be on it, that, uh, that and dealing with the, the business plan and dealing with the consultant, where they would say, yes, this is an existing link between the back end system and what you're trying to build. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, you have to upgrade the software uh, of that back end system to make it work. So that's the component of what we don't get. Thank you. Maria? 
Yes, and I appreciate Chad asked uh, the questions and for the clarifications given. But uh, the one I was asking was the fees, if we are looking at the rationale that we need to continue this, etc. Right? Okay, so I appreciate that. The other part of this, I guess, and yes, it's a web tree design, but could there potentially be offshoots of that that may not go the web? And I'm, I'm thinking about those scan codes. Like I'm looking at transit. Right now we have the, uh, the number that you call when you stand bus stop and they give you the, the next two time periods that the bus should be there. Are we looking also that this is another sort of offshoot that could potentially come from this as being those scan codes at facilities that somebody can put their, or I'm not technologically advanced, but their specific <laughs> phones up and get the same information they would get on the website or they could, could get by phone. Is that also part of this? Yes, yeah, so through Mr. Chair, the, the reason we chose HSR was partially because we've already done some work in this area to, to identify the experience for citizens and to look at scope and what beyond a typical traditional website might be possible. So QR codes at the bus stop, uh, SMS text messaging for people, if young people are on cell phones and they have texting but not a data plan or voice plan to call. So we do want to see for that one that we are looking at a bit more broadly in scope beyond simply the web. The others might be more tightly confined to web, but, but it's transit. In fact, transit's the one that the scope and potentially the budget might be more larger than that. But that 75,000, whereas the others might be you know, quite a bit smaller. Well, and uh, certainly looking at the, I mean, the biggest uh, users would be the transit that uh, can affect and service. Okay, thank you. I mean, one of the things we're looking for, is, you know, Q1 to Q4, is we're going to be looking for some early successes. I mean, we, uh, you know, we, we first started, well, we started prior to November. Our first meeting was in November. So, I mean, uh, um, I'm not anxious for this to go on forever. Um, yes, we took the interim step of providing an envelope of money to get us on, on, on the road. But I think we need to see progress. We need to see some results and some, some, some early successes so that our, our, our efforts and our dollars are not wasted in that. So, uh, We'll be looking for kind of ongoing updates uh, on, a, on a regular basis. We made the commitment to meet twice a month in that. So I want to get to the point where we are meeting twice a month so that we can have input. Uh, um, so Jay, back off to you now for um, right, Mike? Talk to you. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, no, thank sorry. you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I apologize for being late, but we've had uh, the opening of our very first satellite food bank in the water now today, so I'm quite excited about that. Um, a lot of good questions being asked. Um, my one question, and uh, you may have covered this off before I got here, but we're looking at the RFP closure of being January 29th, as I understand. And then under next steps, you've got some timing to take us up to May. Okay, so we're going to do this part on the slide, yeah. So we get different people to make the presentation. Oh, so we haven't got past this yet? No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Could you so, tell me on the list for my so, question? So, okay. <laughs> so, so, what, so what's the page down for it? That's why I can come in for the question? Uh, yes, I'll be page 13. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, yeah, we're still on this one. Anything up until page four, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'll thank you. My question. No problem. Thank Jay, you. please. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So, uh, just to give the, the context for the, why we're doing the threat technology assessment, uh, the, the ultimate goal for this is we're recognizing that a significant investment in technology and processes and, and systems is ahead of us, and it has to last us, in, in the case of the old website, eight years or, or longer. So, we really want to know that that investment in that technology is sound, that it's really based on finding the most efficient and effective uh, results for the, for the investment that we're about to make. So that's the underlying goal for doing an early assessment and getting support and understanding where we should go, what directions we should take. Uh, the goal for this is to look at the options, costs, the benefits, and the risks of a technology investment. And basically, when we're talking about our technology, we're looking at the platform we're going to build on, the hosting, so where it lives and who provides that connection to the website, and the development model, so how we develop for that website. Uh, as Council Collins pointed out, we could look at building, buying, bringing in from other municipalities. We want to know the best way to do that assessment for when we should do which piece so that we're really approaching that in an objective and method methodological way. And we're considering several options in the technology assessment. So uh, looking at open source versus proprietary software. Uh, traditionally, we've looked at more proprietary, but obviously open source is developed and 
recent years, and there's a lot of good cost reasons why we would think about that. Internal versus external hosting. Uh, so some of you may have heard of cloud, the cloud computing, and so that's the idea of external, getting a provider to provide some of those systems for you, versus internally where we want to leverage our corporate network and our infrastructure to deliver that service. And third party versus internal or staff development. So looking at that uh, option of when we buy a software, when we commission a third party to develop something for us, and when we use our own internal resources to develop. And we also wanted to open it up a bit to say, tell us what we don't know. Uh, so we're asking them to also look at other relevant aspects of web technology investing that would be relevant for our business going forward. When they're uh, doing this assessment, they will be looking at the city's existing web technology environment. So what are we currently doing? What investments have we already made? And how can we leverage those to the best effect? They'll be looking at government and industry trends. So uh, we see a lot of trends in government, but I think we do want to keep an eye towards uh, some trends in the private sector as well, because oftentimes they can be leading and, and give us good direction, but also following the best practices of other governments so that we can remain integrated with other levels of government for interjurisdictional services and continue to follow those uh, trends. Our internal staff capacity, so understanding the skills the resources that we have internally and how we could best leverage those for our investment, as well as knowing when we need to look at external resources, so bringing in the experts who can do it faster, better, cheaper than we need to do. And then the flexibility of our system to meet our, meet our needs over the next week, 10 years. So the growth, we expect things to continue growing, we expect more services. We definitely want to scale to be able to deliver those objectives in the future. And just to give you a sense of what other, some other municipalities are looking at, we sort of uh, positioned this in the RFP document just to give people, uh, the potential the consultant the information about how to help us understand what other municipalities are doing. We want to look at what other municipalities are doing, but also what they're doing well. So where is it working for them? Because I think a lot of other municipalities that we've observed may have services available, but what's the uptake on those services? Are they realizing cost savings as a result of offering that self-serve option? Uh, we want to understand how it's been working for them because we recognize that we're, we want to follow where the, the leaders are rather than following where we would learn. Um, so in that approach, we, Ottawa, we know, is a, a bit of a leader. They're working with federal counterparts to sort of establish a very open source environment, a loosely coupled environment that allows them to plug in play different options. So they're, they're definitely thinking of the future and being very flexible. And also following standards that are interjurisdictional, which will help in terms of those interjurisdictional service delivery options. Some are contracting and hosting and management of their websites to third parties. So we've seen this in Kitchener and other communities, where they simply get an outside company to do a large bulk of the heavy lifting in terms of hosting and management of the infrastructure. And they may have a, a mix of internal staff and also commissioning that third party to develop for them. And then some are using a traditional internal staff model and using their internal infrastructure. And we see that in London and Brent and other communities. And, uh, so, and we would fall into that third category currently, although we do do some engagement of outside third parties for different services. And we also have a lot of software options that we've purchased. But we want to know in this assessment going forward over the next eight to 10 years, what's the best mix for us here, considering all the conditions that we have and considering our objectives around cost reduction and self-serve options migrating people to that self-serve. And there, and there probably are other options and there's combinations of these options. And so we're looking for that assessment to really give us a good sense of where it should be. Factors for consideration for us. Uh, so the cost, obviously, we, we emphasize the cost of being one of the primary drivers of, of our approach. Uh, we also gave them a good understanding of co community context, so that the trends towards asking for open source and asking for more open systems so the community can play a collaborative role. And obviously, performance is very important for us. We want to ensure we have the uptime that's critical to our business needs, that we're getting the service levels and the, the ability to deliver the services that we need. We want it to be easy to support, easy to maintain, easy for citizens to use, um, have a lot of design flexibility, and a lifespan, a long-term lifespan. So our current technology is actually, uh, many parts of it are out of lifespan. And this represents a bit of a risk to the, well, not a bit of a risk, but quite a significant risk to the organization in terms of being able to deliver on, on our service delivery levels. So we want to make sure that we focus on that as well. 
quality and availability of service and support. So we definitely want an option where we can find local people, resources, skills who will be able to use that technology. We certainly don't want to invest in something that may be great in, in Europe or somewhere else, but where there's no local ability to use that technology. And uh, ability to meet security and privacy requirements, obviously very important to us. Ability to meet our accessibility requirements, very important. And ability to deliver a city website on time. So we're definitely stressing that the technology needs to come in quickly. We need to be able to use it quite quickly, get up and running, and show those results. And then any other relevant considerations that uh, may be identified that are important to us as well. Uh, so we're using an RFP process for this assessment. It was sent to 300 uh, web and technology professionals and consultants based on our city's procurement listings. So we're quite pleased with the extent of uh, the number of people that have received that. It's also been communicated to vendors who contacted us uh, in the past few months to express an interest in working with the city. Uh, so we've received some media attention around the project and we received a lot of feedback. I think quite a bit of it came in through Cancer's offices as well. And we wanted to make sure, so initially we told them make sure you're on our procurement listing so you can be aware of any opportunities that arise. And we did notice that some of them didn't quite get onto that procurement listing yet, so we did do a follow-up just to make sure they were aware that we're already starting and encouraged them to get into that system. Uh, 23 potential bidders have picked up the bid so far. We've seen a mix of local and regional vendors, so people from the GTA or Kitchener Waterloo areas, as well as national, multinational vendors that we would expect would normally pick up something of this sort. And as was mentioned, it closes Tuesday, January 29th. Uh, so that was a good window, actually. It was over the holidays, so we extended the window a bit just to give some more time. And so I think it's been up for six weeks, which is a few weeks longer than we normally do. And uh, we're looking forward to getting that uh, completed as quickly as possible over the couple, next couple of months. As Mike mentioned uh, at our last meeting, it was discussed about public consultation, and so we've had some discussion about how we can do public consultation both inside this assessment as well as overall for the whole web project. So we did include an element of public consultation in this uh, technology assessment RFP to gather the feedback regarding the technology platform from those interested citizens and community stakeholders. We are looking to, uh, to also have a, an open community information session just to share information about the project going forward. We haven't uh, been able to share this information broadly yet except for the council report. It doesn't always give some of that detail that would really matter to a citizen or a stakeholder. So we wanted to give an opportunity for those folks to come in and hear about the project and ask any questions and sign up to be uh, kept aware of other aspects of the project as we go forward. So we will be doing an information session on February 12th is the date that we're targeting from 4 to 7 p.m. at City Hall here. We'll do a, pre a brief presentation and overview at 6 p.m. And, and various staff will be available to answer any questions of anyone who might attend. And we'll be looking to do poster boards, fact sheet, a comment sheet, and sign up for future consultation. And uh, we will follow up with any of the citizens and stakeholders that ask to be kept in the loop on the aspects of the project going forward. And so those folks that we connect with, as well as some other stakeholders that we will engage, we'll definitely make sure they're invited to the consultation that will be done as part of the assessment, so that their feedback formally makes it into that report and part of that analysis that that expert will help us with. And I think that that's it for my session. And then I'm going to just pass off to Ken Roberts, who will be talking about the business case going forward. Okay, so anyone on chat? I think Judy's still on. Oh, wait, so yeah. Uh, my question's in regards to the uh, the online services. And um, I think you talked about uh, cost savings. So putting more services on the web, that would lead to cost savings. And I wonder if there's an opportunity for us, again, to get a shopping list of, of those where if we wanted to make an upfront capital investment, we could see the payback over a period of two, three, five, ten years, whatever it is. And so but I, I'm unclear at this point in time, again, what services we could offer. I, I know just in terms of efficiencies, Toronto has that, um, you know, the graffiti reporting system where you're, you're taking a picture of, of the graffiti, it's sent right away to the municipality and their crews are on it instantaneously, which going through the call handling review process, we know how much a phone call is, we know how much, um, you know, over-the-counter service costs and, 
And so I'm assuming that when we you know, get down to that level of just taking a picture of something and the email is sent, that's got to be the, you know, one of the lowest cost you know, service interactions that we have with the community. So I, like, how do we gravitate to that quickly rather than waiting till 14, 15, or 216, knowing that the sooner that it's implemented, the, uh, either the, you know, the more revenues we generate depending on the service, or in some cases, we'll streamline efficiencies within that service delivery uh, model, whatever it is, whether it's public works, you know, a tree's down, it's graffiti, it's a pothole, it's whatever, those, those um, interactions with the public can happen so much quicker if, if they're using their, their mobile device rather than picking up the phone or even sending an email in some cases. So through to share, the way I can tell you what we've done to, to do the analysis is we've looked at various sources of data to, to get an understanding of where citizens are currently using services as well as where they might benefit from the services. So the data sources we've looked at, web metrics, the email analysis, and call center analysis primarily tell us a lot about what citizens are currently doing and what channels they're currently touching. We looked through all of that to identify where we saw big pockets of activity that don't have a service available on the web so that we could tie that back to a gap where we need to focus on that. And then by and large, we looked at those big service areas where we're already doing the work to identify the experience for citizens to understand if they needed improvement. So we do have a list, uh, an extensive list. We're happy to share that with you. It wasn't a report, but it's probably listed as an application. So I'm not really clear that these are the services that we provide. And we can certainly share with uh, what other municipalities are doing. We uh, looked at, I believe, five or six municipalities that we thought we could align with Toronto, and Windsor, Ottawa, some of the players that we know are kind of leading in this area. I believe we looked at Calgary and Edmonton as well to look at where, what mix of services they are providing so that we just can see side-by-side -side comparisons where we line up and where there are gaps. Mm -hmm. We'd be happy to share that information at a future meeting for sure. I think we'd appreciate that. Especially those where there's uh, cost savings associated with it. So if there's, some are just straight efficiencies, right? If we get to the pothole quicker than, you know, the traditional method, we may save risk management issues and, and those types of things. Um, but there are others, I'm sure, that the case could be made that, you know, there's a clear financial benefit to having this service offered so those ones for me would be of the most, of the most interest. I, I would just say that, that that cost analysis wasn't part of our original assessment, but we certainly can look at where that fits into for bringing that information forward. Long term, that has a relevance to the service delivery review. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, to add to, to Jay's comments, that's something that we're looking at at the strategy team level in context with the other opportunities. So the web is a tool by which we can deliver services, improve services, um, look at efficiency. So how does it interact with how we're delivering that service? So we're trying to align those things and uh, make sure that it's consistent with the web project so that we can bring things forward. So it, all, it usually comes down to um, how, how does this help your service delivery? How can you be more efficient? How can you improve the overall service experience? And uh, so just to be assured that we're integrating these so that we can bring things forward more quickly uh, if possible. So the business units have to understand what it is my service that I'm trying to improve uh, or deliver, what improvements need to be done, and what role does the web play in that. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we'll over to over to Ken. Yeah, and, so, and I do want to start just by commenting that there's one base that we don't have around the table, which is Kathy Keeley, who's the other centralized uh, sort of staff member who had been working on this particular project. So that leaves Jay as our, our single sort of centralized person who is uh, who's working on the web at the present time. So he's a very busy employee. Uh, his expertise has been greatly appreciated. Um, I'm going to comment too. Is Kathy been poached? Uh, yeah, she's she's the, the, she has. Through the chair, Kathy has moved on to a uh, opportunity in another municipality, and it was a progression for Kathy. So, yeah. uh, Kathy's that was a great opportunity for Kathy, and I uh, can tell you, I personally am very thankful for uh, the skill sets that Jay brings to this project, and uh, I'm very appreciative of all his work uh, over the last year. Well, we're not questioning that. We're just concerned that there's only still only 24 hours in a day. Right? Yeah, exactly. 
I think uh, Jay is yeah, concerned yeah, about that yeah. too. Um, Ken? And I was going to comment as well that um, I'm working on a, another project which, uh, with a uh, professor from San Jose State University where we're um, assessing public library, large public library uh, IT readiness for future needs. And one of the responsibilities that we have done is to uh, evaluate 35 websites and large libraries based on functionality, presentation, and usability uh, using an objective tool that was developed in the States. And uh, it, it was interesting to see that almost the larger, it's not a complete truism, but the larger the library system, the more you start to see some of the very same issues that you, you start facing. This, the problems with search, the problems with how to uh, navigate your way through the site older technology because it's just harder uh, to make everything change. So the smaller ones were more nimble and, and were easier to adjust without, uh, without question. And I think what we wanted to do right now is to sort of uh, indicate those elements that we believe, uh, having heard from council, having had the consultation with council members and with uh, SMT and with other staff members and with the general public, uh, if we were to come back with a business case and anticipate it say around May, is what are the elements that would make that a successful business case? What is it that really counselors would like to see in that particular case? So we're going to sort of give you our, our cut at that, uh, so you, you have some sense of what it is that we think that you're asking for. Uh, we can certainly welcome the media feedback in this meeting, but you can take it away and talk with your colleagues and, and get back to us more slowly if you, if you wish as well, so that we make sure that we're addressing the issues and when we go to council, that somebody doesn't say, well, I'm surprised you haven't addressed or talked about whatever the issue may be. Uh, we want to make sure that anything that anybody wants to know about ahead of time is in the business case that this group we were prepared for. Uh, we certainly uh, understand in all business cases, no matter uh, what it, it may deal with, that managing, avoiding costs, uh, dealing with some of the cost impacts of it has to be part of the business case. Uh, in this particular project, we understand that uh, that's going to involve the, uh, the implications of, sh of shifting to self-serve channels. Uh, and I think, as you mentioned, uh, Councillor Collins, that uh, the, the sort of using the web is by far the least expensive method of uh, interacting with the public, and it can be the fastest in terms of the response as well. So it, it's uh, highly satisfying to use it many times. So it's just the impact of shifting that particular cost where are the savings? Uh, how do you manage to, to accumulate those and bring them into a centralized basis for the website? And, uh, and, and what's the impact of it? Uh, the streamlining and consolidating the content in the website. So at the present time, we have a, a, a lot of web authors across the organization who are providing a lot of content. So is there an impact in terms of streamlining the content of that? So that it makes one of the ways you can make search function a lot better is by not having as much content. Uh, and making it, I think it's even Jay's done with the HSR pages where he was able to take about 100 pages and reduce it to 18, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and waste and then what it has exactly the same content. So is there an impact in terms of uh, consolidating the content and making it so that the website is more, uh, is more compact? Um, is there an impact in terms of, of reduced advertising? And, and kind of offsetting that, the impact of making it so that you're eliminating mailing costs, you're eliminating handling, you're eliminating printing costs. And I even have an example of that from the library system where we used to mail out overdue notices. And uh, when we actually went to the, uh, the web and the voice notification for overdues, the savings was over $100,000 a year uh, just for that <coughs> application. Not then that, that wasn't even counting the staff time. That was just the cost of the dealers and the actual printing cost. So it was hard cost to, the, to be part of that process. But there has to be a willingness to make sure that you're moving some of those publications onto an online format to do that. And then improving the processes and associated with the operational cost for the cost avoidance stuff, just so that you don't have to have as many authors for a uh, smaller number of pages. And if you make it so that the processes of putting the information up there is a smoother, easier, faster, and locating the information and even making it so that the website is being used as an information channel for lots of staff so that if somebody calls then they can immediately know that they can go to the website and find that information and help somebody from the public instead of referring them to somebody else, then there's uh, associated savings as part of those cost, operational cost avoidance for it too. So we're assuming that all of those in terms of avoiding cost and managing cost are something that you would, you would want 
to see in the business case. You can do the next move. And uh, the other aspect of it, of course, is not only do you want something that is uh, efficient in terms of cost, but you want something that's efficient, efficient in terms of improving the customer experience and, and potentially increasing revenue as well. So um, what we, and, and Jay has talked about this on a number of occasions, to address the usability problems with the most requested online services, because if it's online and it's easy to use, then people will use that as the format, and then it's avoiding phone calls, and it's avoiding people using some of the other more expensive channels for finding that information. The increased uptake of city services, if it's easier, and I, I like your example, uh, Councillor Collins, where you're talking about you may it in uh, because you save a dollar, whatever it may be, in terms of the transaction cost, and that's repeated over and over and over again. So is there an ability to um, increase revenue and have an, an increased uptake on city services because it's easier uh, to do uh, and benefit perhaps to the, the, to the patron or to the, uh, the customer? Uh, in, increased convenience, certainly it would have been easier for you to have done that online than it would have been to have put it in the mail. And uh, we have specifically addressed, we would address the issue of the transaction fees, uh, where is that revenue uh, barrier to people using the service? And is there some other type of a model where maybe there's a slight change in the charge overall for the services and then a reduced cost if you do it online to encourage people to use the one that's the most efficient in terms of the, uh, uh, of, of the cost of the organization? And uh, to review the uh, advertising opportunities was one that was specifically mentioned at GIC. Uh, we have done uh, an initial report on that and look at it and we'll present it back at the next meeting. And so it's ready to go pretty well in order for you to see that particular aspect of it. The other aspect of it that we would want in the business case, and uh, naturally we are going to be dealing with the sort of technology platform the modernization software that we're currently using is the 2003 version of uh, the software. So uh, certainly we know that in, in terms of compliance and security and privacy and lots of the other advancements that have been made to the software that we need to have that as a modernization. So we'll put through kind of the benefits of what it means to modernize the software and the cost for that particular software. Uh, meeting the uh, AODA compliance. Um, it's funny, when the province did the various uh, standards for AODA compliance, they, they made an initial assumption that IT would be the easiest one, so they put it through as being a, a short deadline. And uh, I, I think that there, there's a great misunderstanding about how easy it is to adjust IT in order to make it complete. It's just not a matter of making the font larger. I think as Jay was even saying earlier today, uh, there are people that have problems with colors and contrasts, and there are people that have that want it so that it will speak to you. And uh, sometimes when you're hitting things, that, 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 as we know, the Hamilton site has a lot of uh, uh, PDFs on it. Uh, those are almost impossible to make AODA uh, compliant. So it's it's also not only making the site itself compliant, but changing the nature of the workflow and changing the way in which people are going to put material on it so that they're not using that as the kind of default way of putting the material onto the web uh, into the future. So it's, it's actually quite a, uh, a complex issue in terms of the AODA. And then we want to make sure that the, the new website enables that kind of innovation and collaboration and that it stays up to date and explore those opportunities for open source. Um, uh, I know I just did a paper for BC on the future of libraries and we're encouraging uh, such things as, as translation of websites to be done by local community groups. So that can only be done if you've got the kind of open data uh, concepts that are part of that. Uh, alternative service delivery and dealing with kind of improving the entire technological systems, not only making it easier for the public to use the site, but easier for staff to put material onto the site itself. So that, um, but at the same time, ensuring that there is an editing function so that it's not just anybody can put material up and it gets bigger and bigger and more and more of you. And then, of course, there is that aspect of meeting the demand for mobile service delivery in a changing environment where, uh, at the present time, there are even uh, some places where they're developing back end apps for some of the applications that the city may have. But uh, the changes in, in sort of software um, may make it so that there are better methods of, of putting mobile uh, service out there. Uh, Jay was just saying earlier today, which I didn't realize, is that 30% uh, of the traffic uh, is actually uh, mobile at the present time that's going to the city's website. 
So uh, clearly there's a demand for it, and there is a need to sort of upgrade the capabilities of the site in those areas, particularly those that people will most frequently will want to use in a mobile environment. And I think at that point, I turn it back to Mike. To, to the chair, in terms of next steps, uh, you've heard through the presentation uh, some explanation to the various uh, next deliverables in terms of future subcommittee uh, meetings. In terms of the advertising uh, revenue, we were directed as part of uh, that uh, June 2012 report to consider and report back in terms of the potential for generating revenue. And so we uh, expect to come back in February uh, at the next subcommittee meeting and provide a uh, review of the potential in terms of revenue generation, as well as share with you some of the learnings of other organizations, including municipalities, that have undertaken uh, this objective in terms of their web developments. Ken uh, made reference to the AODA legislation, uh, and while there may be some relatively straightforward actions as it relates to the AODA le uh, legislation, and, and I'll just remind the subcommittee members of the date of January 2014 in terms of compliance, uh, there are some potential impacts that will uh, require some amendments to our uh, business delivery. And so at a future subcommittee meeting, we hope to share with you demos of uh, approaches in terms of positive uh, amendments, in terms of accessibility, and less than positive amendments in terms of or, or existing uh, websites with respect to accessibility and with respect to improving uh, the experience of uh, those who will not face challenges. So in terms of uh, look and feel, uh, it's, uh, it's not lost on the web redevelopment uh, team that look and feel is a uh, significant objective that we uh, hope to, re to be able to report back on in March in terms of our plan. Uh, I'll remind the subcommittee members in June when we presented the web redevelopment plan and I'll share with you in terms of whenever the web development team are discussing actions as it relates to the plan, uh, we are very much focused on a citizen-centered experience. And so uh, part of that web development will obviously include that uh, in terms of the delivery. And so uh, again, we hope to provide a update in terms of the plan and in terms of the work plan going forward as it relates to improving the uh, look and feel of the city's website. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, web technology assessment, as Jay identified, the bid is set to close on January 29th. And we hope that uh, by April, May, April, early May, to be able to report back on the outcome of the web technology assessment. And uh, finally, with respect to the business case, as Ken expanded on terms of deliverables, uh, again, we are targeting May to report back to the subcommittee with respect to a uh, broader description of the potential of the web redevelopment in terms of the uh, corporate businesses. So through the chair, uh, that concludes the uh, formal presentation with respect to 4.1, and if there are any further questions, I'm sure so. Right. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I actually have a couple more questions now than I've ever had before. Um, just, just to confirm, did I hear correctly that the o o AODA compliance deadline is January 2014? 2014, yes. So it has to be done up, ready, running by January 2014. Go ahead, Chair. Any content or anything on the web? Changed since January 1st, 2012, right. has to be AODA compliant by January 1st, 2014. So we have a lot of archival material that we perhaps have not changed, and we are focusing on anything that's been changed since January 1st, 2012. Um, but part of this exercise, of course, in looking at a new technology platform is that it also has to support AODA compliance. Content and the templates for the way we put information on the design and look and feel will create those templates. That all also has to support those AODA compliance uh, requirements. 
And uh, so January 1st, 2014 is the deadline. But it is the way they wrote the regulation. It has to be all the information has to be compliant if it's been changed or if it's new content or new websites since January 1st, 2012. So it's kind of a little bit uh, unusual, I think, in terms of their approach. But um, it's, given it's, it's not unusual. Unusual that they were the <laughs> challenges that uh, that Emil and others have shared with the uh, with, with with the ministry. Yes, yes thank you. And uh, so my next question is: um, uh, Can you indicate that uh, that Jay had um, mentioned earlier today that thirty percent of the the traffic on the website uh, is mobile? And I'm assuming that. When that you've done an analysis of all of the content to see which are the key areas that are most accessed. I'm wondering if you could just speak a little bit about that, please. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, in the web redevelopment, we will be focusing on making mobile enabled websites. So there's two concepts out there there's mobile applications, which are the apps you download on your smartphone, and there's a mobile enabled website. We are looking at the mobile enabled website as our component of this work. And basically that would make the information on our website, if someone would ever access it on their smartphone or tablet, it will look good, they'll be able to see it, adjust it, and work with that. And we are hoping to include in that one or two, or hopefully as many as we can, online services also working in, in the mobile space. So the, the content is sort of easier to do. The applications are more challenging because we need to take what are potentially big forms and split them up over multiple things. And so it's, it's more challenging, but uh, we're certainly having an eye towards doing that and making sure we support whatever devices come forward and are following our other communities that are approaching mobile in a positive way. It's a really quick growth. We, I mean, that uh, number was just 4% I think a year and a half ago. So we're seeing it go quite like that, obviously. And you know, after Christmas jump. time, we see the big jumps. Yeah. Everyone so gets their new devices. That's, yeah, and that's... Um, I'm very pleased to hear that. But coming back to the actual content, when you look at our website, you do the, the assessment. You know, what are the areas that are most often accessed? Anything around that? Sure. Uh, the, uh, the online services that are most often accessed are finding a job, transit, recreation, uh, waste services, paying parking tickets, animal licensing, business services, and bits and tenders. And so if you actually look at our home page on the left-hand side, you'll see a list. Yes. And by and large, that list was very much based on the data, very much based on the analytics of what citizens are then looking for on our site. And those are broad content areas. And then within each service area, there's specific tasks that citizens are trying to accomplish. So in waste, it's about finding that collection calendar on holiday times. Mm -hmm. It's understanding what, what goes into which stream of waste. So within each of those content areas, we then take a deeper look and say, what are citizens really trying to do? And then go along each one of those tasks and make sure that there's a service option or an availability of that information to support the citizen completing that full transaction online so they don't have a missing piece of information that forces them to then call and email and do some other channel right. hitting us twice. Okay, so that list is still, because I, I mean, I've used it myself. We've referred uh, residents to it through you, Chair. Um, so, so this is still pretty accurate, but I think, um, you know, I, I would agree with, I'm not sure who made the comment earlier, there is just way too much information on the website, uh, way too much that probably isn't even accessed, but, um, you know, certainly we could do some more efficiencies. My, my last question for you, Chair, is are we looking at the ability to be able to send out renewal, like, renewal notices for licensing, and I'm thinking particularly of, of animal renewal. You know, I, I know there's been a couple of complaints that have come into uh, our office about people wanting to pay their bills online, there's been challenges around that, or they didn't quite get to it, then they've got a hefty fee that they've been charged, they're getting uh, penalized in some cases for just a you know, short uh, overage of time. And uh, so I'm just, I'm wondering, are we looking at, even outside of animal control, but that ability to send renewal notices? So let me jump in and Jay can speak to some specifics to the chair. It's, uh, when the staff identified in June those five online service areas in part who we were uh, being directed by the web analytics uh, work that Jay uh, was supporting and uh, providing to the strategy team. The strategy team also uh, identified 
uh, under business services an opportunity and the need to consult with, uh, for instance, planning and economic development to try to work together in terms of identifying specific areas where we could work together in terms of the local development team and in that particular case, planning and economic development in terms of uh, highlighting a specific business service uh, to uh, focus on in terms of online services. So it was part of the initial uh, proposal and it was suggested at that time that we would engage and work with specific departments depending on the direction of uh, council and uh, that subcommittee in terms of uh, where we're headed with online services. Okay, and I'm glad to hear that for you, Chair, because I think, you know, our goal here should also be increasing the amount of, uh, of user-friendliness and accessing uh, for making payments online. Um, so, you know, I think using that as one of the lens we look through, uh, we should be able to achieve that. And, and upping our revenue, um, you know, looking at the, the fee structure as well. And my last comment, if I may, um, uh, not to go on too long about this, but when we talk about the timing, uh, I, I definitely concur with, uh, with our chair that we don't want this to go on forever. We need to um, move ahead uh, efficiently and, and quickly, but what is our end goal? Have we thought about what our end goal date is? And then are we kind of working backwards from there? Because I'm hearing, I'm hearing going up till uh, June now, I believe. Um, but what about the implementation stage? Have we got an end goal in mind? So uh, let me start and then Jay can speak to uh, the uh, web team's work plan. The, uh, in terms of the, the overall project, uh, it was always presented as a 2013-2014 uh, initiative. Uh, having said that, you'll see in that next step slide is we are uh, taking some concerted efforts to, to move forward on specific components of it. And, Hence, we want to come back with plans with respect to the look and feel of the website, with respect to our AOPA uh, requirements. And so again, our, uh, our commitment to this subcommittee is to continue to come forward in the near future with plans, to uh, receive uh, feedback, comments with respect to those plans, and identify not only uh, in terms of the process we look, uh, we're looking at in terms of delivering, those, but as well as how are we going to resource those. So we, we, we've identified that we've had some changes in terms of the team, some departures. Uh, notwithstanding that, uh, you know, we have identified that we need to deliver, and so we'll be looking at creative ways on how to resource these initiatives. And so staff uh, continuously meets, and uh, we will be meeting again at the, uh, later today in terms of how do we support uh, these various components that are identified in next steps. So again, our objective is uh, to try to deliver on as much of, uh, as possible in 2013, recognizing that we had always identified that would be a multi-year uh, project uh, expanding into 2014. And in the case of online services, that would involve as subcommittee or council direct staff to either review or expand on the number of online services that are supported. Okay, so can we say September to November 2013? So, so, <laughs> so through the uh, that's okay, I've done. Yes, yeah, yeah. through the chair. Uh, yeah, okay. Our next, our next check-in in February. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have uh, some further information with respect to our plans and uh, receive your, your comments and feedback uh, and provide some indication of our deliverables in 2013. Thank you, Chair. I think what we want, and Jay can come in, is I, I think is um, we've got these steps that we have here. Um, Councillor Collins has indicated where there is, I'm going to call it cost avoidance or, or opportunities that we can seize that, um, uh, should we say, builds on um, the revenue sort of, um, sources that we've got in order to fund this project. As you were aware, there was an overall proposal made in June of last year and we decided to take the incremental steps. Mm -hmm. So uh, the feeling is if, if we can assist in funding it from other ways to get it done sooner rather than later, I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, my desire is to have the whole thing put to bed by the end of 2013. Uh, I, I'm living in utopia um, based on the on the realities and that. But in in my opinion, not only is the, is, is the public and councils looking forward to um, meaningful results. Once again, early wins, low hanging fruit that we can get to soon as particularly ones that um, normally equally optimize the revenue opportunities, being whether it's new revenues or cost avoidances, but for me equally is, is the service provision. In other words, I, in my own mind, I want to reduce, even eliminate the frustration of, of the users of our web page and, and, uh, and, and as a result, they become much more comfortable, much more confident in it, and as a result, they will go to it rather than rather than avoid. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very excited. Yeah. yeah. So I think Jay wanted to yeah. say something, and then then Ken's going to tell us that we're going to have it done by next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I, I think uh, the original project was looking at 18 month project, and so I think yeah. there is alignment to end the 2013. Are going to see significant changes, and as soon as they are available for release to citizens, we definitely know that we want to get pieces out of there as quickly as possibly can. Recognizing that the whole project is. Thank you. And sorry, and just, and sorry, and just on that, Councillor Holmes, just take the chair for a second. Is I think as we well, not think as changes are made and there's improvements made, I think that the onus is upon only this committee but in concert with the strategy team to release to the public these changes that take place so that they, the public can go to them sooner rather than later rather than find them by happen chance, they, are, uh, they, they, they can direct their, their resources. So I think the onus is on us to inform the citizenry as things improve. Ken? I, I was just going to say, if you do the thing right now that the, the website is, is seen, as being a negative in terms of the same. Uh, we would like the website to be seen as in the same positive in terms of the city. If you're looking at a time frame, there's going to be a point in there at which it's at least neutral. You know, you're not receiving the same number of complaints. Then I think it's a reasonable time frame to say that you can you can move to the point where it's going to be not a negative. You know. uh, but the temptation sometimes is to stop there. I'm not hearing the same number of complaints to you, we've made it. But we have to make sure, I think, that we continue on that path beyond. I mean, even if we were to do something and by next fall, it's not going to be any, it's not going to be a positive, it's going to be no longer a negative. You know? Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I think that we have to continue on that journey to make it, to make sure that we don't stop that process, that it becomes something that the city of Hamilton is exceptionally proud of instead of just not it's not a liability. Councilor Collins, you take the turn. Yeah. So my, my just comments are what AODA, the, um, the new AMO website is, is AODA uh, compatible. What's interesting is, and, and I was on kind of a working group that developed it, we have an after uh, working group on things. So it's, it's, it's compliant, it's got those abilities. Um, I don't think I'm colorblind, but I'm told that I can't distinguish between chartreuse, saffron, uh, um, all those things. So the what I resolve, what I see myself at looking at the AMO website is is even though it's AMO, sorry, AODA compliant, the colors for some. So one of the things we're adding to it is the ability to um, darken the greens. Or lighten the green, so that this is something. So we're we're making it more AODA um, compliant from that standpoint. So we're we're better than minimum, but that's one of the things we look at. We we want to be um, not just compliant. We want to be at least compliant and uh, and, and better from a from a service standpoint. Back to me. Anyone else on this? Jay, sorry. Uh, I was just going to comment on that. It's a very good comment. And we have met with the advisory committee for personal disabilities, and that the approach we're taking is not to 
just focus on the technical legislation, although we're going to focus on that, but also to focus on the experience and really validate that people are able to use our services. So we have the technical checkbox, but we also want to make sure it works well and we will be engaging citizens in the Hamilton community to participate in that. And that was a message that was well received by the advisory committee. Judy Denzel and Abel was the point person on the uh, on the call for us. Okay, item 4.2, uh, that's it on 4.1, I see no further hands, 4.2. Yeah, motion to receive the presentation by staff. Pearson, Clark Ridge on the motion, all those in favor? Here. Item 4.2, Mike, your talk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I don't have a handout for uh, the subcommittee because we're still in the final stages of putting together a strategy. Uh, I'll also mention that Anne Lemaine was here and is a member of our community agency, but had to head to Westmount for the ribbon cutting that's going there. Uh, so Anne is one of our uh, resident experts on social media, on the communications team, as is Mike Marini and a few others, and so they've been very instrumental as we pull together <coughs> our social media strategy. Uh, at the last subcommittee, at the last subcommittee meeting, uh, we were given direction to come back to a future meeting to discuss uh, the corporation social media strategy and implementation. Uh, before we discuss that, I just want to take members of the subcommittee back to last summer, uh, where we brought forward a new communications media relations strategy. So I think some of this is relevant to the discussion around social media. So I wanted an opportunity to brief briefly address that with the committee. Um, in that policy, uh, much of our media relations and communications efforts, uh, if we identify, are moving towards social media, moving towards more technological uses, and so we included an extensive portion in there on social media use. Uh, I can hand that out and have it distributed in the email to members of the subcommittee. Uh, again, it's captured within the whole media relations policy, but it's a large appendix within that media relations policy. In that document, we spoke to things like maintaining transparent communication processes, distributing information using multi-channel formats. We also spoke to authorizations, rules of engagement, definitions. Uh, there's also extensive appendices on how to select the right technology when you're talking about social media, measurement and evaluation. Um, guiding principles uh, were also included in there and I think they're the basis for uh, what our social media strategy will be coming forward. So since that time, staff have realized that we need to get, uh, we need to get on social media, we need to be more active. I'd say that we've continued to explore and become more active than we already are. Um, as a communications team, I think, again, you know, we do realize that that's important and we need to be getting out through using these other areas. So since then, what we've done is look at an inventory of uh, the internal social media accounts we have. So we have Twitter, we have Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. We've also looked at what other municipalities are doing, um, how they do it, uh, and to what extent they do it. Uh, in terms of what we have, just to give you a brief synopsis, we have three or four Twitter accounts currently representing a range of departments. Uh, Hamilton Police and Hamilton Fire are both on Twitter as well. We have a YouTube channel uh, that we post a lot of videos, for example, the casino videos uh, from the casino forums are up on that YouTube channel. Uh, we have a LinkedIn page again and a number of Facebook pages focusing around rapid transit, economic development, uh, and tourism. Strategy, and I guess what we need some direction on or some approval on or some agreement, uh, is really intended to do two things. Better align the work uh, that's going on in, in the departments uh, in terms of social media being first and number two, uh, some uh, approval or uh, agreement that we want to create a more corporate presence. Um, we realize that you know social media is a tool both in terms of how we deliver services but also in terms of decision making and how we solicit input and solicit feedback. So our hope is in the next month or so if we move to having another meeting or having meetings in two weeks to come back with that strategy presented to this subcommittee to get agreement in principle that uh, this is the right way for us to go. To have some meetings with our internal and external stakeholders. I uh, listen to some of the comments, some of the suggestions they may have. I think it's one thing we've learned and one thing that uh, I think will be important as we move forward with social media. Uh, and then hopefully in the spring be in a better place to, to launch some more corporate sites. So a corporate Twitter account, for example, is something that we've secured a Twitter handle for. We've had a number of discussions with the uh, with the web team as a communications team with various uh, other managers of the organization. Um, and also to ensure that training amongst our internal staff and the departments uh, is completed as well. And then again, to finalize that corporate strategy. Uh, you know, Anne just sent me a message uh, saying she heard some of the comments around uh, the mobile app. That is something that, or the, the mobile 
nature of how people are uh, looking for information. So that is something that we're aware of and that we're, we're cognizant of in terms of social media and see that as, a, as an opportunity. So I can answer some questions. Uh, I just want to first uh, thank uh, Mike and Ann for, uh, for picking the torch up there. And I know they've been working on it some time since prior to when I raised it at our last committee meeting. And I, mm -hmm. I guess the frustration for me boiled over when we had our first no response. And I was following people on social media for road closures and um, you know, areas of concern within the city. And we weren't getting those same messages from our staff. And so I, there's only so much capacity, as we all know, in the local media to cover not only city issues but to, to carry the city's message and you know for things that are both big and small. And I think we all know that we have limited capacity in terms of budgets to advertise those in the traditional mediums that, you know, whether it's radio or print media and, and other avenues. And so I just see it as such a low cost alternative to what we traditionally relied on. And I think it goes back to what Jay talked about earlier and that was you know improving services and and there possibly being some benefits with revenues. I, I see that happening with, you know, if the museums are going to have specials on family days, for instance, it's unlikely that's going to be carried um, in large part through the mainstream media. But if we have, you know, a following of, you know, 10,000 or so people, let's use Twitter as an example, and we're blasting that out for several days prior to family day, I can imagine that those attendance figures will probably rise because you know, it's like that old shampoo commercial in the 70s where they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on. So that 10,000 then becomes, you know, something that's probably exponential. And, and, and so the fact that we're not on there, we're on there in a limited way with the, those that might just reference. And I think there's, some, there's been some reluctance in the past in terms of um, maybe dealing with some of the issues that come with more citizen engagement. And we went through some of the pitfalls of that over the last couple of weeks on another issue. But I just see there being more opportunities than, than not. And, and the faster we can make that happen, the better. And uh, so I just wanted to thank Mike and Ann for sort of coming to the committee, giving, giving us the update, and um, helping us better understand the opportunities that might exist. And if there's a motion that could require to do that, I can't see why they would. If there's direction they need, then I'd be happy to provide it. But it sounds like everything's on track and, and on schedule for the spring. Yeah, it sounds like if, if we require uh, a motion of, of, su of support, will come from when Mike reports back to us, and then like the, the next month. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Further, anyone on that? Yeah. Um, yes, if I could, uh, yeah. Chair. I also I very much support the use of Twitter, but I think along with that, we need to have uh, some protocols around it, identifying the people who will be um, charged with or approved to send out Twitter messages and that, you know, we put a goal of, of maybe sending out, you know, 10 tweets a day, depending on the departments, but, but good current information, specials that are happening, um, you know, certainly economic development does, does that kind of thing, but I think for our recreation centers, um, you know, and, and I, uh, I agree with everything that, that Chad has said. I sent out, um, you know, a, a tweet on the weekend. It was to do with the horse uh, race industry and, and some comments and a link. And it got retweeted to 15,000 people within half an hour. And I was, you know, I was just amazed by that. It was good relevant information. Now, that can also happen with, as you referred to, some of the other tweets that have been sent out. But uh, I think when it comes to the city, we want to have a corporate account. There's no question. But, um, you know, certainly like fire and, and EMS and police do, they send out excellent tweets throughout the day, uh, several of them as a matter of fact, uh, which, which engage the, the uh, you know, our citizens. And it is a very, very low cost way to do it. It does need to have some protocols around it, um, but I would support that 100%. Thank you so much for jumping in. So Mike, just a quick comment for you, Mr. Chairman, to, uh, to Councilor Partridge. I think what I'm going to do is probably pass along the uh, copy of the uh, communications and media relations policy that we have in there. Again, like I said, there is an extensive uh, section on uh, some of the things you mentioned, so some of the protocols who are designated and approved spokespeople. Um, I mean, at the time we put it together, we realized that, that social media is just like any other media in terms of, it, I shouldn't say that, social media is, a, is, a, is another tool, um, and so we put some of those uh, processes in place, but if, if you read it, uh, if, if members of subcommittee think that there needs to be some additions, then we can bring that back at uh, the appropriate subcommittee and, and 
the approval of this policy, quite a minute to this policy as well. So and, and I guess, and I guess, if I may, what, what I meant by most of what I said was that we actually have people identified who are going to do the tweets. So we may have people approved to do the tweets who, you know, wouldn't necessarily uh, take on sending out a number of tweets a day. I think we need to do that. It needs to be used in order for us to actually have a presence on it. Um, and, and just my last uh, question through you, Chair. At the February, did I hear, 12th presentation that we're having from uh, 4 till 7 p.m. Will 12, 12. 12, yes. Will there be a discussion about the social media component as well? So through the Chair, uh, in terms of the web redevelopment, one of the objectives was to support social media. So in terms of how the redeveloped website would support the, the social media strategy uh, as, a, as a tool. Um, specific so to the social media strategy, yeah. uh, we weren't anticipating uh, having specific information to the social media strategy unless Mike uh, is able to support that. So through the chairman, uh, to the council, I think we had some discussions early on when we had talked about having this public consultation uh, about you know, ensuring that some of us are there to talk about social media in, in the event that it comes up, not so much a formal presentation to the group uh, to stay focused on the issues of the web and the development, but to be there in the sense that questions will likely come up, and so we'll have some staff there to answer those questions and believe how we left it at the last century. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be there. Okay, Staff will That's be there good. to address any of those inquiries that come up. So Mike, I would suggest you do send those uh, uh, terms of reference out to, uh, out to us soonest so that we can wrap our head around them um, in advance and if there's uh, something that just jumps out at us, we can get back to you sooner before you come back to us in February. Okay. Does everyone agree yeah, with that? Sounds good. Absolutely. Yeah. Councilor Pearson? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I thank Mike for a clarification there. It is a communications policy. I did pull it off. This is the same one. It's a 25-page document uh, that we did approve. And the reason this was brought up actually today was because of GI, uh, audit and finance, we had a motion before with regards to social media under a similar context. So there's a bit of confusion of who's overseeing this. I think we'll get this clarified. But there were issues raised at audit and finance with regards to moving forward in the use of the uh, Twitter, et cetera, social media as far as uh, staffing and counseling. Thank you. Okay. And just before we move on, before we get to item 5.1 is I think there's an important, there's a collaboration of efforts on the wars, um, and, and you'll see this in, in 5.1. We've got to make sure that we complement the efforts and we collaborate so that we're not wasting time and efforts and we have to, you know, rewrite process or procedures when we, could, when we ideally could have done it right the first time and, and, and incorporate it. So can I have a motion to receive Mike's verbal report on 4-2? Pearson Collins on the motion. All those in favor? Carry. Item 5.1, implementation of related work. So Mike, to you, please. Yeah. So through the chair, uh, staff are looking for, for some direction. And I'll speak to uh, what exactly we're looking uh, for from the subcommittee. Uh, when the original service delivery review report went into June 2011, there were three components to it. Was, uh, including uh, the uh, IS governance, the call handling review, and the web development. Uh, I would suggest, in terms of the web development and the call handling review, that it was a rationale for including those two com components into the uh, overall uh, service delivery review uh, initiative. And uh, the reason I say that is both the uh, web redevelopment and the call handling share some common objectives and some common outcomes as it relates to the city's image, to improving customer service uh, and enabling the city to provide services at a lower cost. The uh, call handling review uh, uh, is focused on, uh, sorry, the service delivery review is one channel of uh, service delivery and we recognize and the strategy team the service delivery review the strategy team recognizes the fact that the call handling uh, function is uh, similarly another another channel of uh, service delivery. So, given the fact that uh, both these initiatives share some common objectives and some common outcomes, uh, the strategy team felt that uh, the web redevelopment subcommittee may want to consider amending its terms of reference to include oversight for not only the web redevelopment but the call handling review and, and an 
effort to identify uh, some uh, additional opportunities or efficiencies given uh, that they both represent channels of customer service uh, and given the fact that uh, opportunities may be maximized, uh, as Councillor Powers points out, when we look at uh, specific outcomes uh, under, uh, under a review in terms of all our emissions. Uh, so again, we're just looking for some direction uh, uh, in terms of uh, staff reporting back in the future, and uh, I would suggest the February uh, subcommittee meeting with some recommendations uh, in terms of amending the terms of reference for this subcommittee uh, if uh, this subcommittee is uh, open to uh, to those amendments and those uh, revised items. So Jane is here to answer any. Um specific questions in that but in essence what Mike's looking for is whether in principle we support it and uh, and then we'll have the devil in the details in, in, in February and report back to it so is there any objections to at least us hearing about it in February? Okay. okay. Just require this direction Mr. Chair. Yeah, no motion is required in this, direct, this direction to allow you to uh, continue to, uh, to move ahead and then come back to us for further uh, direction that way. Okay. Item six, is general information or other business. Uh, Mike or staff, is there anything that you'd like to bring to our attention? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, again, we uh, will provide some updates with respect to the timing of that uh, public information session if it's prior to our next subcommittee meeting, we will uh, alert you through an email and uh, obviously invite uh, subcommittee members if you wish to be part of that process. Members of the committee, any uh, further information or questions? Is that all? I'll accept the motion to stand adjourned. Pearson, Parkridge on the motion. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.